Good morning and welcome to Black Rock Church. We're going to start the service in just a minute, but before we do, I wanted to share with you a few places for you to get involved with us and our online community. In the description and comments section, you'll find some helpful links for us to stay in touch. We also included a link for you to easily give your offering online and links to visit us on Facebook and Instagram. If you would like to worship with us in person, you may reserve your seats for next week beginning today at 1 p.m. by going to brc.church. If you ever miss a service, you can still access it online. Just go to our website at blackrock.org and click Watch Sunday Service, or you can go to our YouTube channel. Well, thanks again for joining us online this weekend. Let's get started. in Black Rock. Glad to have you. Whether you're home or you're at Backyard Church, come join us. Worship with us. How many know there's nothing that our God can't do? 
Here we go. Just one word. You come the storm that surrounds me. Just one word. The darkness has to retreat. Just one touch. I feel the presence of heaven. Yeah, yeah. Just one touch. My eyes were open to see. My heart can't help but believe. Here we go. There's nothing that I've got can't do. There's not a mountain that he can lose. Oh, praise a name that makes a way. There's nothing that I've Somebody clap your hands, here we go! There's nothing too hard for God. Here we go. It's just one word. You heal what's broken inside me. Just one word, you revive every dream. Just one touch, I feel the power of heaven. Yeah. Just one touch, my eyes were open to see. Here we go, say, there's nothing that I got. How many of you know at home, there's no power like the power of Jesus? Hallelujah. Help us sing this part. It says, I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Say, I will be for greater things. For greater things. See, there's no power. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Say, let people rise. Let all the dreams. Say, there's no power like the power of Jesus.
Welcome to Black Rock Church. At Black Rock, we seek to love God, love people, and serve our world. And we're so glad you chose to worship with us this morning. Today and next Sunday, we have the opportunity to celebrate the baptisms of 24 people. We recently hosted a powerful baptism service for the people being baptized and their families. And now we're excited to share that with you so you can hear the stories of lives being made new. 
Thanksgiving is coming up this week, and we're reminded of the many reasons we have to still be thankful. It's been a bumpy year, but God is always good, and we still have many things for which to express our gratitude. We know that for many people, holidays, especially in 2020, can bring expected and unexpected stress and pain. But as these things happen, there's one thing that will never change, God's love for you. God showed His love by sending His Son to be born as a baby on that first Christmas. Even during the darkest times, we can find strength and comfort in Jesus' birth and be transformed by the real meaning of the season and how even during COVID, it is still Christmas. As we focus our attention on who God is, which hasn't changed, let that carry us through the Christmas season. We are planning special services each Sunday in December, which will remind us of that important truth. Coming up on Monday, November 30th, we'll kick off the season by beginning an Advent Christmas devotional that will run through Christmas Eve. It will include a daily reading and scripture focus, as well as two devotional videos per week from our staff. Visit brc.church to sign up now so that you're all set to begin with us on day one. We look forward to celebrating the fact that the true reason for Christmas hasn't changed. It is still Christmas. If you're new to giving online, we've made it easy for you to give your offering as a one-time gift or a recurring gift online. To do that, visit our website and click Give. Checks can also be mailed to the church at any time. Now join me in prayer as we continue with our service. Father God, we praise you for being the holy, loving, and faithful God that you are. And we thank you for the many and unique ways that you have blessed us to be a blessing to others. We ask that we would be faithful stewards of all that you've entrusted to us. And as we give back to you a portion of what you've given to us, Lord, would you magnify it and multiply it for your name's sake in our community and around the world. In Jesus' name, amen. After he gave his life on the cross and rose from the dead, Jesus gathered his followers and said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So what is baptism? Baptism is the outward declaration of an inward decision. See, the gospels make it clear that becoming a follower of Jesus begins with a decision. And then once a person makes this great decision, that Christ follower goes public with that decision through the act of baptism. And both today and next week, you'll have the opportunity to witness in a series of several segments, the baptism of over 25 of your brothers and sisters as they publicly declare their decision for Jesus. And you may be asking, what is this decision? Well, the great decision that makes a person a Christ follower is summarized in the two questions posed to every person before their baptism. The first question is, have you received Jesus as your personal savior? And the second question is, do you purpose to follow Jesus all the days of your life? Hi, my name is Lauren Battaglia. Lauren, have you received Jesus as your personal savior? Yes, I searched for a connection with God for a long time, but couldn't seem to find it. Last year, I felt a call to give my life to Jesus, but I didn't really understand what that meant. But God was faithful. A few months later, a friend explained how I could confess my sins and give my life to Jesus as my Savior and Lord. When I prayed, Jesus came into my heart and I experienced his freedom and love. And do you purpose to follow Jesus all the days of your life? Yes, I cherish God's gift of salvation. I'm beyond grateful and I have new purpose in my life to fulfill God's will through Jesus Christ. I'm ready to devote my life to him and I choose to be baptized today to proclaim my trust in Jesus, my Savior and Lord. Therefore, upon your public profession of faith in the Lord Jesus and your declaration of purpose to follow him, I do therefore baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.
Hello, my name is David Cano. David, have you received Jesus as your personal Savior? Yes. Uh, the seeds of faith in Jesus were planted in me at an early age, but I wasn't living my life to please God. When I was 33, several situations made it clear that God was calling me to surrender my life to him. Then my sister invited me to Black Rock Church, where I felt an amazing sense of God's presence. A few months later, I asked Jesus to forgive me for my sins, and I received him as my Savior and Lord. I now sense God's peace and a renewed hope in my life. I know that everything is under his control. And do you purpose to follow Jesus all the days of your life? Yes. Psalm 27 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? It is this confidence in Jesus that I choose to be baptized. This is my public declaration that I'm forever grateful for my Savior's blood and forgiveness. Each day I will choose to follow him. Jesus, today I'm coming home. Thank you, Lord. Therefore, upon your public profession of faith in the Lord Jesus and your declaration of purpose to follow him, I do therefore baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Caleb, have you received Jesus as your personal Savior? Yes. When I was younger, I didn't really understand a lot about God. When I turned 13, I really started understanding God's plan for my life. I knew that I was a sinner and needed a Savior, so I prayed. So me and my father prayed for Jesus to forgive me and come into my life. And do you purpose to follow Jesus all the days of your life? Yes. To me, being baptized shows that I'm a believer and that I'm ready to follow and obey Jesus. Therefore, upon your public profession of faith in the Lord Jesus and your declaration of purpose to follow him, I do therefore baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Daniel, have you received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Yes. I thought I needed to be ordered to receive Jesus as my Savior. Then a few months ago, my dad showed me what it really meant to follow Jesus and explained that I didn't need to be older to believe in him. All I needed was to confess my sins and trust in Jesus to save me. Since I already believed, we prayed and I asked Jesus to come into my life. And do you purpose to follow him all the days of your life? Yes, being baptized today will be a constant reminder that will help me draw closer to Jesus and follow him. I also want to grow in him each day by reading my Bible and praying. I'm ready to follow Jesus for the rest of my life. Therefore, upon your public profession of faith in the Lord Jesus and your declaration of purpose to follow him, I do therefore baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Hello, my name is Jose Tabora. And Jose, have you received Jesus as your personal savior? Yes. A year ago, I was struggling with anxiety and panic attacks. During that time, I was led to read the Bible. Through his word, God began to answer many of my questions about life. When I asked Jesus to, uh, to forgive and save me, I felt instantly filled with his love and presence. Despite my recent cancer diagnosis, my faith and trust in God is growing each day. I know that Jesus is with me, so I have no fear. And do you purpose to follow Jesus all the days of your life? Yes. Today I declare victory in the name of Jesus Christ, my Savior. He died on the cross so that I can have eternal life. I receive God's grace, and as it says in Psalms 23, I'm ready for him and lead me. I'm ready for him to lead me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Jesus, thank you for saving me. 
Therefore, upon your public profession of faith in the Lord Jesus and your declaration of purpose to follow him, I do therefore baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Hi, my name is Rachel Sakari. Rachel, have you received Jesus as your personal Savior? Yes, during a time of loneliness and isolation, I realized that I needed Jesus to be my Savior. I connected with Jesus through Sue, my high school leader, who poured her love and plans into my life. I decided to take my next step in my faith journey by confessing sins, receiving Jesus as my Savior, and wholeheartedly placing myself in his care. And do you purpose to follow Jesus all the days of your life? Yes. For me, being baptized shows all my decisions to put my trust all in Jesus, not today, but for the rest of my life. It means giving up my selfish ways and living my life only for him. Now it is my desire to share his love and joy with other people and bring them to the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Therefore, upon your public profession of faith in the Lord Jesus and your declaration of purpose to follow him, I do therefore baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let's take a closer look at these two questions that summarize a decision for Jesus. The first question is, have you received Jesus as your personal savior? See, God came in the person of Jesus to solve a problem. The problem is that every person is broken and twisted with sin in a way that separates us from God. So God came in the person of Jesus to die on the cross so that we could personally receive God's forgiveness and a relationship with him. And the key here is personally receiving Jesus. Because somebody might say, well, I believe in the history about Jesus. I believe the history that, that Jesus died on the cross and Jesus rose from the dead. Does that make me a saved a child of God? And the answer is no, not really. I mean, think about it. If being a Christ follower was just believing the history about Jesus, then Satan and all the demons would be considered children of God because they certainly believe the history about Jesus. So no, it's not enough to just accept Jesus as my historical savior. The great decision is receiving Jesus as my personal savior. Making Jesus my personal savior means going to Jesus personally and saying, Jesus, I've sinned against God and I believe you are my only hope of forgiveness. I believe that you died for me personally so that I could live in a personal relationship with you. Again, some people might say, uh, I believe in the church. I, I, was, I was confirmed in a church. I go to church. Doesn't that make me a Christ follower? And the answer is no. Nobody is saved by having Jesus as your institutional savior through a church or a human priest or institution. Jesus must be your personal savior. Or some say, my grandparents were strong believers or my parents raised me in their faith. Doesn't that make me a Christ follower? And the answer is no. God has children, not grandchildren. Nobody is saved by having Jesus as their generational savior or their institutional savior or their historical savior. Jesus must be my personal savior and I must personally receive him as the apostle John says in the first chapter of his gospel. To all who receive Jesus, to those who believe on his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So before each person is baptized today, you'll hear them read a bit of their personal story about their personal decision to receive Jesus as their personal savior. Hello, uh, my name is Stefan Schneider. And Stefan, have you received Jesus as your personal savior? I have received Jesus as my Lord and savior. It was w when I realized just who he is and just what he's done for me. Um, I realized that I wanted to follow him and be more like him. And shortly after that, I put my faith in Jesus. And ever since, he's just filled me with unbelievable love and joy. And do you purpose to follow him all the days of your life? I do. Um, baptism for me is just my public announcement of just my faith in Christ and, you know, that I'm a child of Christ. And, and I know it's going to influence people positively around me. And Jesus is even starting conversations with people who I care about that are in need of Jesus right now. And I'm just so thankful for it, like to him for that. And um, I'm just excited to 
continue influencing people with Jesus and for Jesus for the rest of my life. Therefore, upon your public profession of faith in the Lord Jesus and your declaration of purpose to follow him, I do therefore baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Hello, my name is Lori Langdon. And Lori, have you received Jesus as your personal Savior? Yes, for as long as I can remember, I believed in Jesus Christ. I was even baptized in my 20s. But recently, as I've grown closer to God, I realized that my earlier baptism didn't reflect my true heart change. I needed to repent and surrender my life to the Savior, and that's just what I've done. And do you purpose to follow him all the days of your life? Yes. I'm here today to declare that Jesus is my Savior and Lord. I choose to give my life fully to him and to follow his will, not my own, for the rest of my life. I love you, Jesus. Therefore, upon your public profession of, in faith in Jesus and your declaration of purpose to follow him, I do therefore baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ella Langdon. And have you received Jesus as your personal Savior, Ella? Yes. Claire, my sister, helped me receive Jesus as my Savior. We were reading the Bible and praying when I shared with her that I had been thinking about turning my life over to Jesus and asking him to save me. She said, you can do it that right now. And I said, I'm ready. So we went to the into the closet and I prayed to invite Jesus into my life. When we finished praying, I felt brand new. And do you purpose to follow Jesus all the days of your life? Yes. When I asked Jesus to be my Savior, I knew right away that he would be so close to me from that day forward. As I am baptized today, I am telling everyone that I will follow Jesus for the rest of my life. Therefore, upon your public profession of faith in the Lord Jesus and your declaration of purpose to follow him, I do therefore baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hi, my name is Cassie Lathrop. Hi, Cassie. Have you received Jesus as your personal Savior? Yes. For many years, I tried to find happiness by surrounding myself with people and running after the distractions of this world, but I always ended up disappointed and empty. That all changed the day Jesus spoke to me through God's written word. I chose to confess my sins and put my faith in him. Now Jesus has filled my life with his overwhelming joy and love. And do you purpose to follow Jesus all the days of your life? Yes, I'm being baptized to proclaim to the world that I choose to follow Jesus for the rest of my life. I'm ready to experience all that his perfect plan has for me and to share his perfect love with everyone. Therefore, upon your public profession of faith in the Lord Jesus and your declaration of purpose to follow him, I do therefore baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Hi, my name is Christina Ho and Chung. Christina, have you received Jesus as your personal savior? Yes, for years I struggled with feelings of inadequacy. I saw myself as a deeply flawed person who only brought suffering to those around me. This started to change when I became involved in a campus ministry. I realized that Jesus accepted me, forgave me, and loved me just as I am. His grace was all I would need. So I decided to place my trust in Jesus and give him my life. And do you purpose to follow Jesus all the days of your life? Yes. By being baptized today, I am acknowledging my faith in Jesus Christ. I will follow Jesus, my Savior and Lord, and strive to be like him for the rest of my life. Therefore, upon your public profession of faith in the Lord Jesus and your declaration of purpose to follow him, I do therefore baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Hi, my name is Attila Paul. Attila, have you received Jesus as your personal savior? Yes. Um, as a child, I didn't even know about God, but he knew about me. As I was trying to cope with the unexpected loss of my dad in 2012, I met a boy named Justin at school. He invited me to Black Rock, where I finally learned about God and came to understand that Jesus had been right there with me through my pain and sorrow. 
He transformed a scarred, lost boy into who I am today, a follower of Jesus Christ. And do you purpose to follow Jesus all the days of your life? Yes. As I've let God's love fill the cracks in my heart, he's given me a spirit of empathy for others, a servant's heart, and his abundant joy. Now I'm prepared to walk through life smiling with gratitude for what, Lord, what the Lord has done for me, and I'm excited to spread the Lord's joy with many others along the way. Thank you, Jesus. Therefore, upon your public profession of faith in the Lord Jesus and your declaration of purpose to follow him, I do therefore baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So what does it mean to decide for Jesus? Well, the first baptism question is, have you received Jesus as your personal savior? And the second is, do you purpose to follow him all the days of your life? If you know the gospels, you know that the first disciples became disciples because Jesus pushed them to make a decision. Peter, James, and John were professional fishermen. And one day Jesus walked up to them and said, follow me. And Peter, James, and John understood immediately what this was. This was their holy moment of decision. They understood that Jesus was not saying, hey, no obligation, just check out my website if you, no. Uh, those first disciples knew that Jesus was pushing them to make a decision. Jesus was saying, I'm calling you to follow me. Now you decide, yes or no. And 2,000 years later, nothing has changed. Jesus is still coming up to people one by one and saying, make a decision about me. I'm calling you to follow me. Decide, yes or no. This is the great decision. This is the decision that determines whether or not I'm a disciple of Jesus. As Jesus himself says in Luke, whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. This is the decision. Will I follow my appetites or will I follow Jesus? Will I follow the culture or follow Jesus? Will I follow the crowd or follow Jesus? Will I follow my fear or follow Jesus? Those who are being baptized today are publicly declaring that they've made their decision and they have decided that they'll follow Jesus all the days of their life. And you hear in their voices this expectation of cross caring. They understand how following Jesus means giving up everything so they get everything in return. Listen to these words from the author C.S. Lewis. This principle runs through all life from top to bottom. Give up yourself and you'll find your real self. Lose your life and you'll save it. Submit to death the death of your ambitions, the death of your favorite wishes, and you will find eternal life. Keep nothing back. Nothing that you do not give away will ever be really yours. Nothing in you that has not died will ever be raised from the dead. Look for yourself and you'll find in the long run only hatred, loneliness, despair, rage, ruin, and decay. But look for Christ and you will find him and with him everything else thrown in. And this is the joyful truth you hear in the stories of those baptized today. Each person testifies that there is great joy in the great decision to follow Jesus all the days of your life. Hi, my name is Amelia Kerasi. Amelia, have you received Jesus as your personal savior? Yes, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Although it seems like I've known Jesus my whole life, going to Fusion Black Rocks Ministry for High School students has really helped me grow in my faith. Each day I live my life by believing and knowing that I am a child of God. Through Jesus, my sins are forgiven, and I know that he will love me for all the days of my life. And do you purpose to follow Jesus all the days of your life? Yes, I will follow Jesus for the rest of my life. I have a purpose in him to go and spread the good news about Jesus to those who have not heard. He's calling out to everyone and telling them that all they need to do is believe in him to have eternal life. Therefore, upon your public profession of faith in the Lord Jesus and your declaration of purpose to follow him, I do therefore baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Hi, my name is Caroline Kersey. Caroline, have you received Jesus as your personal savior? 
Yes, Jesus is my Savior and Lord. I have always known about God, but a year ago when I asked Jesus to forgive and save me, I really experienced what it means to be a Christ follower. And now I know that it is not about the things you do to please God. It's actually having a close relationship with Him through His Son. And do you purpose to follow Jesus all the days of your life? Yes, I'll follow Jesus for the rest of my life. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Therefore, upon your public profession of faith in the Lord Jesus and your declaration of purpose to follow him, I do therefore baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Hello, my name is Jonathan Perigo. And Jonathan, have you received Jesus as your personal savior? Yes, I have. My family stopped going to church when I was a teenager, and I spent the next 40 years living without faith. But God never gave up on me. This past year, I've learned that Jesus searches relentlessly, no matter how long it takes, to reclaim a single lost sheep, taking special delight in bringing that stray back home. I was that lost sheep. But Jesus came and found me. When I asked him to forgive and take me back into his fold, Jesus answered by filling me with his spirit and reconnecting me with my heavenly father. And do you purpose to follow Jesus all the days of your life? Yes, I do. Today as I'm baptized under the water, it's my desire to be immersed in Jesus. I declare my obedience to my merciful savior. From this time forward, I want my actions to reflect his faultless, loving, and wise example. Jesus, thank you for saving me. Therefore, upon your public profession of faith in the Lord Jesus and your declaration of purpose to follow him, I do therefore baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I grew up Catholic uh, in my family and you know I'd done that for a number of years growing up and all the way through college but I never really understood kind of you know Jesus' sacrifice or or the reasons why I did it it really did feel kind of something that I was you know I, I was obligated to do as I grew up um, my wife and I had been going to church in New York City uh, since we'd been married um, and at the time I was going through a really rough time in my life uh, work was basically consuming everything I was doing and unfortunately it was creating just a tremendous amount of stress in my life and to the point where I was really lost uh, in unfortunately dragging my family through it. Um, during this time it was amazing because Abby was just incredibly compassionate. Uh, she was so very loving and very understanding and incredibly forgiving. Uh, and I often wondered, you know, where was she getting this and, and how could she have just this much grace uh, during a really, really difficult time in our marriage? And it turns out that, uh, you know, it was really founded not in her own strength, but for her love of Jesus. And I wanted that. It's interesting because when you first make that decision uh, to be a believer and to really lean into your faith, the automatic assumption is that, boom, like your life changes and it's blue skies and sunshine from that point on and, and you don't have a care in the world. And I, I certainly was thinking that, um, but it's not, right? Actually, you know, your reality doesn't necessarily change, uh, but you start to learn is how you approach it, you know, absolutely changes. It's something that you have to be very intentional about. Um, and, you know, one of, the, one of the phrases I learned at Men's Weekend was that I am a work in progress. And what you do learn over time is, is that you'll always be a work in progress, and that's the point. Um, but your faith then becomes your foundation for that work. And that's the important thing. And so for me, I started to lean into the church. I started to get involved, even if I was reluctant. Um, I, I did so anyway, and so it started with Men's Weekend, and my first Men's Weekend. Um, and there I found friends, I found community. Um, from that point, I went to starting point, and I went to kind of advanced leadership inside the church and really started to kind of understand at a more granular level, um, you know, the belief in Jesus and what that meant and the sacrifices that he had made and, you know, how I actually could live my life intentionally with that. 
And for me, what's actually changed throughout this process is, again, not necessarily my reality or the stressors at work, but it's, it's definitely how I handle these things and, and what I actually turn to um, to get peace and, and to kind of, kind of calm that inner turmoil of mine, if you will. Um, I get into the Word, I do a lot of the, the Bible studies and in, in, in the Bible app and a lot of the devotionals. And what you find is, is that there is, you know, on this journey, there's just like every other journey, there are ups and downs and peaks and valleys. But the one constant that you then have as that foundation is your faith and, you know, the love of God and, and being able to kind of recognize that, you know, He has a plan for us all and, um, and that we should just relinquish the control to Him. So being baptized is yet another step in my journey um, and it's an important one. You know, I think that for, for as long as we've been married, Abby's been the spiritual leader of our family. Um, and ever since you know, she's helped me kind of come into my faith, I've really wanted to be there and be that spiritual leader that my family needs um, and quite frankly deserves. And so I feel like right now, um, in this moment, I can in fact be that uh, and, and set that example for my children. Um, one of the biggest you know, things I've learned throughout my faith and my journey has kind of been this notion of intentional living. And for me, that's one of the biggest reasons that I feel like I need to be baptized, where I can willingly declare my intent as to how I want to live my life uh, and declare my faith publicly. So that's why I'm getting baptized today. Hi, my name is Stephen Yap. Stephen, have you received Jesus as your personal savior? Yes, God reached out to me with his love through Abby, my wife. He used her to introduce me to a love that is free from worry and control and for forgiveness and understanding that one can only find in a relationship with him. We now walk on our journey together. And do you purpose to follow Jesus all the days of your life? Yes, by being baptized today, I surrender to Jesus all of my fears and worry about the future. In Jesus, I place my trust in you for the rest of my life. Therefore, upon your public profession of faith in the Lord Jesus and your declaration of purpose to follow him, I do therefore baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. There will be more baptisms uh, next week, but right now, how about you? Have you made the great decision? Have you decided to receive Jesus as your personal savior and follow him all the days of your life? If not, just respond to Jesus right now in a few whispered words of prayer. Or maybe you are a long time believer and you realize how you need to recommit yourself to following your savior. Either way, make this your moment, your holy moment of decision. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for uh, coming to us one by one with the great decision. And Lord, I, I pray for those today who maybe realize that they have never really uh, made you their personal savior. And so Lord, hear those even right now as they whisper uh, their belief in you, Jesus, that you are their only hope for forgiveness. And as they put their faith in you and what you did on the cross for them right now, would you uh, assure them that they have full salvation in, uh, in you? And then Lord, I think of those who uh, maybe have been following you for a long time, but right now is their holy moment of decision to maybe follow you in a closer, uh, more dedicated way than in past days. And Lord, I pray that right now, this would be that holy moment of decision that would draw us all closer to you, our personal savior, amen. If you've placed your faith in Jesus today, or would like more information about making a decision to follow Jesus, head to blackrock.org faith. Well, it was incredible to see all the people today who publicly profess their faith in Jesus. As a follow-up, we want to encourage you to take some time to go over these discussion questions with a friend or family. We'll leave them on the screen for a bit, but feel free to pause it to spend some quality time discussing. Did one of the baptism stories you heard today bring up memories from your own story? In what way is your story similar or different? 
Following Jesus takes commitment. If you've made a decision to follow him, how are you purposing to follow Jesus rather than following fear, the crowd, or your own agenda? What does that look like in day-to-day -day life? Thank you for worshiping with us and enjoy the discussion.